Welcome to Greg Kelly Reports. I'm Lydia Serrani. There is a mass migration going on, and no, I'm not talking about the one going on at the border. Progressives and their woke policies are pushing people to move. The Census Bureau released its annual population estimates for the year, and just as we suspected, people are sick and tired of COVID mandates, high taxes, and of course, crime. And where are all of these issues most prevalent? Die hard blue states. For the second year in a row, New York ranked number one in the mass woke exodus, followed by California and then Illinois. Last year alone, 180,000 people left the Empire State. California, 113,000. Illinois, 104,000. And keep in mind, these numbers are basically a repeat of the year before. So when you double the number of people who left New York, for example, it's a stunning 431,000 people. I mean, how crazy is that? In just two years, about 2% of the state's total population left, packed their bags, and said, see ya. So where are they going? Where do you think? Red states. Texas saw a population boom of 400. 70,000, followed by Florida, 416,000. Then, of course, North Carolina, 133,000. Georgia, 124. Here's why this is such a big deal for the entire country. Because which states you think contribute the most tax revenue to pay for all those social programs, et cetera, that the liberals just absolutely love? New York and California. And who are the people leaving these liberal meccas? top earners. An estimated 9.5% of the people who left New York made above $750,000 a year. New York is now facing a fiscal cliff, a $6.2 billion deficit. What a mess. I mean, what does this mean for New Yorkers? Well, they have to make up the money somehow. That means more taxes for everyone, especially the middle class, as well as cuts in services. And those services, you know those lefties love more than a toddler loves his binky. And when those top earners leave, who is coming in to take their place? Hmm. Migrants. An estimated 5 million migrants that we know of have poured into this country since Biden came into office. And that's not including the gotaways, an estimated 1 million. Forget the fact that we don't really even know who these migrants are, if they're terrorists, sex traffickers, people just released from prison. Remember, that's exactly what Venezuela did. They emptied their prisons and they brought them over here. I mean, all of these people will be dependent on you and me for their housing, medical, what they eat, all the way down to their underwear. Democrat leaders all across the country are finally, though, waking up that the border crisis is in every single state crisis. Right now, we're experiencing a dangerous tipping point at our southern border. Well, let me just say the border is we have a crisis at the border. Everyone can see that. I think everyone realizes that something has to be done. The border is not secure. If there's a crisis, show up. Just show up. Every day, the total number gets higher. Every day from this point forward, was setting a new record. This is a humanitarian crisis. <laughs> okay, Sherlock. New York City Mayor Adams right there. He's now asking the federal government for a billion dollars. The average migrant family of four to be housed here in New York City costs upwards of $8,000 a month. That's a lot of money. You know why? Because they're actually being put up in fancy hotels. Just take a listen to Manhattan Borough President Mark Levine. We're expecting it could grow to as much as a thousand arrivals a day just in New York City. Uh, this is going to be a challenge for us because our shelter system is basically at capacity. So we're going to have to take um, really emergency measures to contract with additional hotels, for example. We can do this, mm. but we need federal assistance. Meantime, our veterans and other homeless people, they have to sleep out on the streets. But the migrants, come on in. I mean, think about it. If you were guaranteed a swanky hotel stay, all expenses paid, plus a cell phone, and in some cases even video games, as well as your health costs, education, you name it, and clothing, would you not risk it all and come here as well to escape poverty? Would you have tried to do this when Donald Trump was president? Definitely not. Definitely. We had the chance, you know, the, the same violence that is going on today was there last year. We used to watch the, the news and uh, I definitely won't do this. So did you come here because Joe Biden was elected president? Basically, basically.
I mean, at least he's, he's being honest, right? As we speak, thousands of migrants have lined up at the border. There they are. You see them in that video. And they are lining up to come in. They're risking it all. And after all, you can't really blame them because we have basically rolled out the welcome mat for them. Hundreds, though, as we speak, are sleeping on the streets of El Paso because migrant centers there are also overcrowded. Border agents are so overwhelmed, several have even taken their own lives. In 2022, 14 border agents have committed suicide, a record. Law enforcement is already a very, very difficult job. We go home every day after being spit at, cussed at, um, you know, and, and our families are threatened uh, by people that we take into custody. And then when you add on top of it that we have politicians attacking us, guys, uh, equating us to Nazis, saying that we're running prison camps. Um, and then, of course, you have uh, President Biden himself falsely accusing Border Patrol agents of strapping people when they never did anything like what he said, and he still hasn't apologized. Oh, please, President Biden apologize for all the things that he's doing wrong. But really, where is President Biden? He is in the Virgin Islands, drinking margaritas, getting his tan on, and where the $1.7 trillion spending bill is going to be flown over to him so he can sign it and put this country further into debt. From the border to the economy, is there anything Biden has not destroyed? I mean, inflation, it's a tax on the poor and the middle class, up 8 0.3% over the last year. An underestimate if you do the grocery shopping like I do. Gas is now on its way back up to four bucks a gallon. And the cost to heat your home is forcing people to get a second job or pay only the minimum on their credit cards. Yet if you look at the mainstream media, they say that the Republicans are the bad guys. They're the liars. Bottom line, Republicans in Congress are liars. You can't expect Republicans to be any more than they are. They are hypocrites and they are liars. The point is Republicans are shameless liars. Well, I guess that was the point. Mm, we'll get more on that later on in the show. But here's a question I truly want answered from someone, anybody, a Democrat, I don't care, anybody. Can anyone name one single great thing Biden has done for this country?